Guys, I didn't want to talk about this, um, but due to some comments that were put in, in place and some things that I responded to, I realized that this is something I actually do have to cover. Uh, so I'm without further ado, I'm just going to get into it. And I have to introduce, we have to go through some information first before we move on to the next. So remember, the kingdom of darkness is composed of fallen angels and their offspring. Their offspring go by many names. Uh, they got the Nephilim, they got the Anunnaki, uh, so on and so forth. Uh, the point of this is all of those evil ones, so to speak, that end up dying, they get trapped in a world specified for them, a spiritual, dark, you know, abysmal world, okay? A place, they, they even have a place built for them, which is known as hell, which is what they try to tell you that doesn't exist. Now, uh, I've always known hell existed since I was a kid. Uh, that just goes without saying for a lot of reasons. Uh, now, with that said, these spiritual beings, okay, they can be regular human beings that chose to go against God and went with, you know, their so-called gods. Those spirits over time eventually become corrupt. Now, you have lesser spirits and greater spirits. And I say greater, they are not greater. Let me, let me specify that. You, the individual that is living on earth, is more powerful than any evil, dark spirit that's out there. But in the rankings of evil, the dark world, there are lesser spirits and there are greater spirits. The lesser spirits, if you played video games, you'd understand what I'm trying to say here about lesser and greater spirits. There's all kinds of examples. If you've watched anime or manga or seen movies such as this, there is... There's always an example of lesser versus greater. Lesser spirits require, you know, an immense amount of influence with the help of many other spirits in order to do something. Whereas a greater spirit does not require that. It is, it, it can pretty much do things on its own. You know, fallen angels, for example, they have, uh, because of their knowledge, uh, and some of them were archangels that fell if I remember correctly, um, they're able to do things without too much effort is the best way I can put it, okay? Now, regardless of that fact, all of those things require permission to enter into anyone's body, anyone's soul. How do they gain access to you? Through your mind and through your heart, your dreams, your nightmares, all of that. Whatever doubt you start to place amongst yourself, whatever doubt that people placed amongst you, eventually becomes something that turns into a sinful way of thinking or a sinful way of feeling, being. And eventually becomes habits that, you, that almost become a way of life. You know, people that live in money and only want money. People that live in sex and only want sex and so on and so forth. You know, addictions are of all kinds, desires of all kinds. Whichever one you entertain the most is the one that turns into something. These things, whatever they may be, may start off simple and humble to someone who is ignorant. But the reality of it is they become like portals. Now, there are real life portals in, 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 you know, on this planet. These portals are where these guys come through. But see, they can only come through in two ways. They need permission or they come through the person which also requires permission. So both ways they need permission. They can't just invade the earth demonically um, and do the things that they want to do, which is cause wreak havoc, cause chaos, so on and so forth, because they hate humanity, okay? These things hate, despise humanity. And the things that lead them, which are fallen angels, want to rule over everything. And the only way that they maintain any power is by causing by reaping souls to themselves and causing those souls to worship them. That's how they remain powerful, so to speak, okay? Just to give you a heads up. <clears throat> now, with that said, that is just a brief introduction to a whole nother thing I am not going to cover. It's just not worth it. But it behoove you to learn these things on your own because at the end of the day, 
These are not things that can be simply taught. It gets very complex. So I'm going to simplify it for you guys in this video when it comes to the dream that I had. That other me, that mimic, was a demonic spirit. A demonic spirit charged with deceiving anyone I get close to. Whether male or female, family member or not, does not matter. Their job is tasked with deceiving others. What is the point of deceiving others? Why would they pretend to be me? The whole point is to discredit who I am as a man and as a person. To cause others to walk in sin. And thereby making me look like um, a black sheep on purpose. Like someone who's not worthy is the point. Someone who's not worthy of consulting. Someone who's not wise. Someone who's stupid. Someone who's anything that they can. Any lie that they can place in the minds and hearts of others. That is their job. And so anyone. Let's say I walk up to people and I start telling them about God and Jesus Christ. Immediately, they start getting these attacks, severe attacks that they wouldn't get from anyone else or for any other reason. It's because these demons are over here trying to uh, torture that person and get them to doubt. Once they get them to doubt, they introduce another person. Sometimes that person could be a Christian who is not really Christian, a lukewarm Christian. Sometimes that person can be, you know, a, an upstanding individual. Sometimes that person can be a not, uh, not an upstanding individual. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. The point is, those individuals have sin and a sin in them that will easily distract the person that I'm talking to. Whether that's a, a, a person I found as a brother in Christ, which has happened. There was someone, I, there was a, a man I literally loved to death, man. I really did. It can happen with, whether it's with, Family, friends, doesn't matter. But the point is that this mimic pretends to be me. This demonic spirit that understands the power that is God, the power that is Jesus, that lives in me, in my heart, and in my mind because I try and do my best to obey because obedience is better than sacrifice. This thing will do its best, is damnness to make sure that I don't even get one person on my side. And why is that the case? Jesus only spoke to... He spoke to what? 12 disciples. He had 12 disciples, right? Think about what one of those disciples that he influenced, what, what one of them was capable of doing. Think about Joseph. I mean, not Joseph. Um, what's his name? Oh, what's his name? John. John the Baptist. Think about the, the things that John the Baptist did in the power of God in Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus Christ. And he called him Emmanuel, if I remember correctly. If I remember correctly, okay? Uh, and this is not head knowledge. I'm going to tell you this right now. This took me learning scriptures. It, it took me reading. And I hate reading, but I'm really good at reading and comprehension. I'm really good with memory in regards to what I read. And even conversation if I care enough, okay? If I care enough. But if I see too much nonsense, I don't bother remembering anything about the conversations that I have or the people that I come across because all I see so which moves on to the next point kingdom spouses okay I say kingdom spouses really it's one spouse yes I did find mine a long time ago but like her many of the other uh, women of my past that I had invested my time in because it, I was very picky, very choosy. And I was picky and choosy for one reason, one reason alone. And that is to do the right thing and choose the right person. I couldn't just be with anybody. I needed to be with someone that understood that there were things in the dark world you had to fight against. Well, lo and behold, a lot of these people secretly entertained these dark things and wanted their dark desires. That's just the reality of the situation. And unfortunately, you can't do anything about it. A lot of these uh, women I discovered later had a jealousy about them, an enviousness about them that was there and apparent even more so when they came to know me. And that is due in part because of who I am. Um, I was, I, I'm not an average man. I intimidate most people. I scare most people with the things that I talk about. The things that most people are starting to realize today were things that back in the day people were very ignorant about. 
I terrified people with the information of what we were go going to go through. Things that God and Jesus had shown me, had warned me, to, me about. Now, of course, at the time, I only knew God. But here's the point of the entire thing. All those women had a desire to live a luxurious life in a way surrounded by family members that didn't really have their best interests at heart. Remember, I came from a dark and evil place. And the sad part is, you think the Christian community is any different out in, in the middle of nowhere, but it's not. It really isn't. It's like the other side of darkness. The silent darkness is what it is. There's the evil side, and then there's the silent side, which is even more evil in my opinion. Because you're talking about people who are supposed to be found, but are not living like a found person. Okay? Now, how does that tie into... The dream, very simply, very simply, it's the fact that, you know, let's say, I'm just going to use this as an example, because this, this should be more than enough to describe the situation of what I'm talking about when it comes to men and women, period, who are easily fooled by a mimic, who are easily fooled by a president with nice words. Who are easily fooled by the actions of good pe of, of so-called good people, but refuse to see the details that lie in between. So many people want, you know, Trump in office. They don't want to see the details, the little details of what this man literally says and calls himself. He is the king of the sting. <laughs> okay. They, there's, he calls himself a snake. Details are what makes a person evil. They can look good. Well, the same goes for that spirit. That spirit might look good. That spirit might taste good, might feel good, might have all the, the good things about it for that temporary notion. But because you failed, because people fail to want to know the minor details, because they choose to live in bliss, in ignorance, they are fooled. They are always fooled you buy a honda you think it's a jalopy everybody everybody you know talks crap about that honda i'm not saying that people do okay but i'm saying that there are people out there you know i'll give you an example my truck you know how many people told me to sell my truck told me to get rid of it it had too many problems too many things that i had to fix blasey 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 blah a lot of people but you see my truck is like a marriage i married this truck I am betrothed to this truck. So what did I do? Unlike a relationship with a person, the truck is not going to fail me. The truck trusts me to fix it. And I trust it to keep me going. So as long as I keep fixing every problem that pops up, it'll be faithful to me and I could be faithful to it. The truck doesn't really get influenced by darkness. It can, don't get me wrong. Because... There's a whole lot, a whole side of that that I'm not covering at the moment. Physical objects can be cursed. Physical things can be cursed. That's just how it works. Even human beings can be cursed. There are curses I've had to deal with my whole life that I had to go through and purify myself from. And there are still a few left. And I say a few because they're they're so well hidden. There's no way for me to really do anything about it. There's only things that um that God and Jesus can handle. Reason being is because most of these curses that I'm dealing with that are left involve a multitude of evil. A multitude of evil on both sides of the spectrum. It's just the unfortunate thing. Okay? And my mistakes, they count. Now, but that's not to say that I'm not forgiven. That's not to say that I haven't been baptized. I've been baptized enough, enough times. So I'm not going to... Let's just say I know where I'm at in God and Jesus Christ is the best way to say it. It doesn't destroy my confidence in any way, shape, or form in them. Now, uh, going back to the truck. Your average person is going to find one problem with a vehicle and get rid of it. Your average person is going to look at that pretty little Tesla and say that's the vehicle that they want, but they know next to nothing about how to fix it. And if they did, they wouldn't buy it because they wouldn't be able to fix it. It would require a ridiculous overhaul just to fix it. Because it's designed so you can't fix it. Programmably designed so that you can't fix it. 
is my point. Can you fix it? Sure. Does it require a lot of no in-depth knowledge? Yes. There's a guy on YouTube that does that. And sure enough, they're fighting him with programs. <laughs> okay. They're fighting him with, uh, with VIN numbers, separate VIN numbers for each and every part digital VIN numbers. Digital VIN numbers. Even from the way that they design certain things. <laughs> okay. That's the best way I could put it. That's a Tesla. Now, why am I saying all this? A lot of people want that pretty little Tesla as long as it's working. That pretty little Tesla looks like that demon. He's got everything right. She's got everything right. They look pretty. They look amazing. They got it all. Then one day, you run into the problem with that Tesla and you got to turn it in. To get it fixed. Well, you don't know how to fix it, so you turn it into someone. You send that 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 man or that woman to a therapist. <laughs> but the therapists, they do what Tesla, what the Tesla company does. They don't do anything. The therapist doesn't do a thing. All they do is talk. At the end of the day, that man or woman comes out still the same, claiming that they've been healed. Just like a Tesla would come out claiming it's been fixed. When at the end of the day, you could have just went for the Honda. Wasn't pretty, but if you would have built it up. If you would have stayed with it. It would be the most reliable, strongest, prettiest vehicle on the road. Just because you put the time into it. And it trusted you. And it put the time in you. The same could be said about any man and woman out there. So when it comes to kingdom spouses, the reason why the spouses are struggling so much and the reason why some very few kingdom spouses named so by God and Jesus Christ to be joined together under them, the reason why the few get together is because the few learn to obey. The majority end up being by themselves, not because they choose to be, not because they don't, they don't fight, not because they don't pray, not because of any other reason, but one reason. One person is doing all the work while the other person is just swimming in a pool of sin. Until they can't swim no more because what happens when you swim in a pool of sin? Your light disappears. And once your light disappears, that's when you come seek out the light only to come back out. Look for that kingdom spouse that doesn't look the right part. Let them recharge you and then you go back and swim in that pool. That's on you. That's on all of the kingdom spouses that decided to do the wrong thing. That's even on the partners that could have, could have been better but chose not to. And I say that because I still have love for my ex. But I know for I know for a fact I will never re-entertain that again. And she learned that. She learned that the last time I met her. And she's not my kingdom spouse. But it isn't like this woman did not know. But what she thinks I don't know. She thinks I don't know that she practices black magic against me. She thinks I don't know that she's been doing it against the kingdom spouse that she was aware of I was supposed to be attached to. She thinks I don't know these things, but I know. But at the end of the day, it doesn't bother me. Like that dream entailed, even though I wasn't physically present in... Um, in the situations that I witnessed. Spiritually I saw things. Physically I felt things. I felt things that were disgusting. I'll give you an example. Uh, the very first girl I fell in love with. I was so in love with this girl. Uh, we had been physical with one another. I was ready to marry this girl. She had cheated on me. But not to a severe level. So I wasn't aware. I knew she was cheating, but I didn't understand if she was really cheating, you know. Then one day, she cheated. I felt it in my soul. It, it was like someone was entering 
and disgusting, sinfully poisoning my very spirit. That's what it felt like. It felt, it gave me rage because I felt like someone was taking something from me that rightfully belonged to me. It gave me all kinds of feelings. All kinds of feelings. The same happened with the kingdom spouse. Let me tell you, when a person is that distracted, there's a reason why the tribulation exists. God and Jesus feel that in the same way. They can only hold out their hand forever. In the same way, I can only hold out my hand forever. I've held out my hand for a lot of people for too long, fighting their demons, fighting their sin, telling them about God, telling them about Jesus. Now, I wasn't perfect when I was doing it. I was not perfect. And here I am, a better man for all of that pain. And you would think being a better example would help these people, but instead they look at me in disgust. Like if I'm lesser. I'm still looked at like in disgust, to give you an example. Recently, I had a couple people try to encourage me to get a place. And after the most recent experience and God kind of telling me to move out, I didn't want to do it. And so I learned, I learned a lesson that wherever I go, I know I have no home here in this world. Because if I go somewhere, I'm going to have to, I'm, I'm going to have to deal with the spiritual warfare that I'm going to get from neighbors. It's just not worth it. So why have neighbors? If I don't have a home in the middle of nowhere, what's the point? I'd rather have a home in the middle of nowhere where no one can find me. If I can't have my own place, why waste my time? To be disappointed and hurt from leaving a place that I call home. It's just not worth it. <sighs> it's a lot to cover. A lot to cover in, in a... This is too short. There's a reason why my eldest videos used to be like two to three hours long. It's because it was a lot to cover. It was a lot of information to cover. It even covered my past sins and what encouraged me to be a better man. But I'm going to cut all the nitty gritty stuff. And I'm just going to say this. There comes a time when you have to pull away. And you have to tell yourself to stay pulled away. That's where I'm at right now. And God, and God in the process of that and Jesus in the process of that are showing me what I was dealing with. They're showing me what they see. Me sitting down observing all that all that crap that was honestly, oh God, it's kind of makes me want to throw up to be honest. And then he tells me and he shows me, he was like, this was you too. I was like, damn, you're right, Lord. It's totally right, that was me. And that's when I go to God and Jesus, I'm like, but you know what the difference is between me and them? Then he's smiling at me when he's when I'm saying this. He's smiling because he already knows what I'm going to say. I'm like, I was listening and I was trying to obey. I wasn't perfect. Had no teacher, but you were my teacher. You were showing me through all that crap, through all that pain, through all those things you were showing me. And I'll tell you what, even through all that, you know, I mean, how many women wanted me that were already in relationships? And I was like, I know you don't want me to do this, God, so I will not do it. They were, some of them were very attractive. Some of them were not attractive at all, but I was so close to them that it was just like hard not to want to be with them. And I was going to give you guys a list of names of people that I had personally sinned with, um, different different women that I had met over, over my life. I mean, there was a... There was one woman in the Marine Corps that uh, there was few few people were trying to get me to to be with, and me and her we were great. We worked out together, we cooked together, we did a lot together. But that girl had a man in Japan. She had a man that was cheating on her in Japan, refused to let him go. 
stayed with him, stayed in a relationship with him, would not let him go. I'm not one, I don't care if you're a boyfriend or girlfriend, even at that time, and we're talking when I was like 23, 24, this was after, you know, my whole breakup with that one girl that I uh, told you about that I fell madly in love with, going to marry her, whatever, that happened during the Marine Corps. She wasn't the only one, by the way. There was another girl that uh, hurt me pretty bad. My relationships lasted pretty long, and usually I would go single for a couple years before I decided to go with someone else. It was a long-standing finding notion that never happened, but um, anyways, this girl had a man. <laughs> it's like... It doesn't matter how good we are together. You have a man. And then to top that off, when it came to spiritual things, you know you know what I noticed about women? Whether they live in God and Jesus Christ or not, supposedly, they do a lot of yeah, yeah, yeah. They do a lot of that. Kind of like a dude, when he really wants to sleep with you, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you're amazing. You're awesome. Bones you and calls it a day. Same way with women. The exact same way. Did a lot of yeses. They all thought I was crazy, psychotic, but they didn't tell me to my face. Now, I will say there is one woman. We made a vow to each other a long time ago and she was just a friend uh one of the reasons why me i never entertained her was because you know i messed around but this girl slept around okay there's a difference between messing around and sleeping around all right my clothes stayed on my body this girl's clothes was constantly off her body on another man and i didn't like that but she was one of my best friends of all the friends i ever had she was the most loyal she was hands down the most loyal. The only reason why I let her go really was because um, every man that she got with always got jealous of me for whatever reason. Um, always felt like I was trying to get in her pants or something, trying to take her for, for myself. And the reality of it was if she was in the right place, I would have taken her to myself. But when she was with other people, I'm not going to try to. Thou shall not covet that neighbor's wife, period, that neighbor's house. Technically, she's part of his of another dude's house when he's. When she's with another dude. So I just looked at her like a friend. I never looked beyond that. And for a long time I did that. You know. She has she has some good kids. They need some serious guidance. But she has good kids. And though she comes from the hood. And acts a lot like the hood. And has a lot of hood traits. Her heart is. It has love. It just needs a deep guidance. She's lost. Is the best way I could put it. But she's listening to God and she's trying to obey God, even though she's lost in her sin. I had to cut things off with that girl. Because it got to a point where I got close to her. And we went out one day and I, and I ate with her and I noticed she gave me that look. And that look was like, wow, she's seeing me for the first time. She's seeing me. Like, I could feel like I was being seen. The problem with that was that even though I was being seen, would she really walk in God and Jesus Christ? I'll be honest, I don't know. Because it required a lot of... Um, I will leave everything. You have to leave your home. Like Jesus says, you have to leave your home in order to follow him. I'm more than willing to leave my home in order to follow him. Can I say the same of her? I've already tested her many times before with certain questions, certain things, and the answer was always no. In a very nonchalant way. She's one of the people that I told about building land with and, and building a community. Never once did she say yes during those times. Now, could she probably say yes now? Sure. But I mean, I wasted a lot, a great deal, a great deal of my time trying to talk to people about God and Jesus Christ. I don't feel like I wasted it, but I definitely wasted, I put a lot of my heart and soul into those situations and it caused me a lot of pain. I just don't have it in me anymore. That's really what it boils down to. 
And God and Jesus are showing me the results of the things that are happening around me. That's just how it goes. They're revealing the secrets no one wants to tell me. Because there's a lot of things that I knew by intuition alone. Not because I went out there and sought closure. But because I knew no one was going to give it to me. And in the process of that today, what I've noticed is that there have been many times when I haven't given people closure. And not because I wasn't trying not to give them closure. But because I myself was not aware <gasps> that I had not given them closure. So, as a form of repentance here, and a confession of sins, I'll just leave it on this video, to anyone that I have messed with or entertained or anyone that feels like I played with your feelings, I'm not going to say I was young because I was aware. Here's what I will say. Something about you was not enough for me to qualify you as someone I wanted to be with. And that's not an insult. It's simply, I had to walk my path, hence why I'm still living in this truck. Who is willing to follow Jesus, no matter where you're at? That's where I'm at. I want true love. True love doesn't have a face. <laughs> it has a heart. It doesn't have things, materials. It has faith. It has Jesus. It has God. It has an unconditional love not understood by human beings. With that said, God bless you guys. I hope this helps. Take care.